is The Chris Abraham Show. Welcome to The Chris Abraham Show, Season 4, Episode 27. I think that's Pente Siete, or is it Sieben und Zwanzig? Sieben und Zwanzig? Or is it Vincet? 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 Je ne sais pas. I thought I would start this right when that uh, vehicle decided that I was going to go beep, 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 back, back up. Hopefully it stops. Welcome back, welcome back, welcome back. I am underdressed and I am cold. While it's 63 degrees here in Arlington, Virginia, it is also super, a little bit rainy super like overcast a little bit one of those cold windy days not like a humid muggy winter day i mean autumn day but it's a total autumn day but i'm still in a black t-shirt and shorts so i am cold i cannot deny luckily it's not raining anymore i had my lunch in a bus stop shelter on uh, Walter Reed Drive, and that's where I came up with today's episode. It is about hunger, 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 and what it's like to be full, and the fact that I feel like I got full before I ate everything today, and that might be one of the side effects of what my cardiologist is doing with me on this carnivore diet, which is trying to reset everything, reset my uh, metabolism, reset my portions, reset my uh, um, addictions, reset my uh, being, my allergens, my allergies, my my gut biome, etc. So that's what today's episode is going to be about. I will Talk to you soon. Welcome back. My name is Chris Abraham. This is Chris Cast, season four, episode Bente Siete. And um, Bente Siete? Bente, 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 e, Bente East, Bente Siete? Hey, Google, what is the Spanish word for 27? In Spanish, that's 27. By the way, I can now translate back and forth. To try it, just keep speaking in either language. Or say cancel at any time. Cancel. Cancel. Cancel at any time. Cancel. 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 You piece of bugger. All right, well, as you know, uh, or maybe you don't know, 
my cardiologist suggested because of my obesity and addiction to food, even though I vanquished all of my other demons, uh, drink, sloth, all those things. Um, he thought he would give me an extremely strict diet for the holidays. So until the December 28th, I think, I am eating strictly carnivore diet. And what that is, is it's exclusively fatty meat, eggs, salt, water, coffee, black tea, black coffee, maybe a little bit of dairy because that's also carnivore. But purists, all they eat is uh, fatty meat with salted, not even peppered or paprika or cayenne or any of that stuff, and uh, water. Maybe some salted water because of, um, I add LMNT with flavor to my diet because I've tried the LMNT, um, element, uh, additive that's just salt, magnesium and potassium. And it tastes like I'm drinking, it honestly tastes like I'm drinking, um, salt water, fish water. And that's it really just water black coffee, and meat, and eggs. <clears throat> so today, last night, I put a big slab of um, chuck, not chuck, uh, yeah, like um, a big slab of roast into my slow cooker and cooked it overnight. And this morning, it was um, done. And I tried to eat a big helping for breakfast, but I couldn't eat that much. And I tried to, I have like a big portion in a vacuum, uh, in a vacuum container, but I tried to eat it at the bus stop and I only ate half of it. And it's, you know, fatty and it's salty and it's meaty and it's beefy. And now I know what it's like to be full to me. It feels a little bit like uh, I couldn't eat another bite more or I'm going to feel sick. So um, Dr. Luck said that that's a couple bites more than satiated. But to me, it seems to be a binary. And usually I can eat until I'm through everything. And today, like, I just ate a portion this morning, and then it's like, oh, okay. So I put the rest of it in this vacuum container and brought it with me and then thought I would eat all of that for lunch, but it just didn't turn out that way. And so I thought to myself, wow, that might be what satiety, 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 being satiated feels like. And so I'm running with it. I closed up the vacuum container, the thermos of roast meat with salt on it. That's slow cooked all night. So it's, you know, that kind of breaking apart kind of beef with the fat not cut off. You need to eat the fat in this diet. I didn't put any hot sauce or anything. It was just plain. And, um... I'm done. I have half the portion left, and I'll probably eat that at 4 or 5 o'clock. It is currently 12.50 a.m. 12.50 p.m., sorry. Um, and uh, <clears throat> there you have it. I never knew what that feeling was like. I know that when I'm sick, sometimes I'm off my food. But I take it that people who have portion control are partially just sort of a little bit off their food. So, you know, they like to eat. And then when it becomes unpleasurable, which I assume is their concept of sati being satiated um, or full, they just kind of go off their food and don't want to eat any more. I can't imagine, based on the idea of being satiated, that it has exclusively to do with uh, a certain level of comment discipline. I don't think it's fully discipline. 
you know, I don't think my buddy Keith, I don't think he's like orders something and only eats, you know, 12 bites of it because he's worried about his pretty little, his pretty little, uh, cute figure. Um, I just, you know, my, my, I know that my, my buddy Mark is more concerned over his figure. Um, at least he's honest in his vanity, uh, more honest than I am. But even I know <clears throat> that in college he used to bloat on an entire, uh, pizza late at night from, you know, someplace up in Adams Morgan where he would bloat on, he called it bloat. Um, but I know now that, you know, he, he eats to satiety, satiety, is that a word? I do not know what the word is, so that's why I'm replacing it with to satiation, or till he's satiated. It's a really weird feeling, and I don't like it. I don't like the fact that after, here we are, I live in a city. Feels like suburbs, but I'm in a city. Sexy South Arlington, Walter Reed Community Park. There are no people playing pickleball. There are no people playing basketball. Like I said, it's 10 to 1. Ooh, there's a pickleball players. I don't know if you can hear that in the distance. But it's kind of like totally gray. Like it feels like feels a little bit like berlin you know a low ceiling of gray clouds um, oh one thing i noticed today and this is a complete aside is that i appreciate arlington because if you're up and out early enough you realize that there are mechanical gnomes everywhere there's mechanical gnomes in um uh, or mechanical elves whatever you call them when you're on dmt uh, going around in white uh, American-made vehicles with the emblem of Arlington on it, and they are washing streets and sweeping streets and 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 blowing uh, leaves out of the way and throwing away garbage and cleaning up and organizing and fixing pipes and taking notice and in other words, the reason why. South Arlington and probably North Arlington are such, um, to me, uh, Shangri-Las or utopian areas is because they spend a lot of resources. A lot of resources go back into the system. And I always used to be really impressed by that when I, whenever I was in Paris. Because, you know, you see the esprit de corps of the Les, F Les Français... Um, when they send around vacuum trucks and street washing trucks and street sweep, street scrubbing trucks and trucks that are giant vacuum cleaners and dudes like vacuuming the, um, the garbage from the curb, uh, in the gutter. And they're generally, you know, wearing, uh, is it white or blue or yellow? I don't know, but I don't remember. But uh, that kind of esprit de corps, that kind of uh, je ne sais quoi, like that, that pride in, in, that pride in, in space, in how you come across, um, that obsession with beauty doesn't happen on its own. Uh, you can see that in Manhattan right now. Manhattan, I haven't been in a while, but you know. They just have not found an antidote for the smell of piss. Not even ubiquitous, um, what are they called, pretzel vendors or, or uh, ubiquitous chestnut vendors during the holidays can, can get rid of the smell of uh, piss and garbage that tends to become the olfactory reminder that you're in Manhattan I knew that there was a little bit of smell of piss in Berlin, but that's only because the Berliners are so eco-friendly that they refuse to ever flush the toilet because they're afraid of wasting water. So they do that to themselves because if you know anything about Berlin is they've got 
they've got all the water in the world. They're surrounded by lakes. They've just, they've got so much water that they could waste it out the wazoo. They just refuse to. Um, back to my hunger and my satiation and my fullness and my foodness. I, if these are the things that one unlocks by t by playing the video game known, known as carnivore diet is I think it's less about eating only meat or any type of um, ideology surrounding the fact like, you know, liver king, any ideology around the fact that we are, uh, in fact, carnivores who periodically eat tubers for macronutrients or whatever, uh, that we mainly consume uh, meat and not even vegetables or leaves or whatever, uh, leaves or leafy vegetables. I'm not an ideologist like that at all. And you know, I don't care about killing animals. I don't even really care about killing anything. Um, you know, we're not immortal. If we were immortal, killing and dying would be much more of a big deal. But, but because, you know, we're pretty much fragile uh, earth monkeys, everybody dies. So getting in touch with that is just just good housekeeping but uh forget about the ideology i'm not like committed to saying awful things like salad is for bunny rabbits or any stupid stuff like that i um i would love to eat uh, a universal diet of of um of eggplant parmesan and um pasta marinara uh, marinara, a pasta marinara, or pata, pasta putanesca for the rest of my life. But I am being ruthless and rigorous and vigilant about this. The only thing that I'm hacking is I'm eating every morning in pill form. I'm eating uh, whatever that husky husk thing is that, you know, gives you fiber. Some sort of husk. I forgot what it's called. I'll let you know if I think about it, but um, aside from putting pills filled with non-nutritional fiber supplement into my body, I'm following this rigorously. A couple of weeks ago when I was starting, I would sometimes add, you know, hot sauce and then I would get lazy and I'd put some mayonnaise or I'd put tomato ketchup or, you know, I was playing it loose and easy, but now... I'm not even putting uh, pepper. Like, I'm just like, man, I got to stuff this beef down my throat. I really like the taste of beef, especially salted beef. I don't really need hot sauce in addition. There's plenty of salt in this. and um, So I'm good with it. Um, I went through, I, like I said, I still have some of the uh, roast, slow, slow cooked roast beef left in this... Uh, uh, what's the brand? Uh, Zoji Rushi um, vacuum uh, thermos. And I still have half a canteen of uh, 40 ounces, so 20 ounces of LMNT. Um, I think it's called like pina colada flavor um, hydration mix. And that's it. I have. A package of liverwurst at home uh, because I'm told that uh, liver is good for other types of nutrients and because I grew up with loving liverwurst sandwiches I know they're processed and there's some carbs in there but I heart me some liverwurst last night I did have I did cheat I had um, I had Clausen pickles and I had a sauerkraut Sauerkraut. Sauerkraut. And so I did have those things because I thought that they were maybe good for my my biome, my belly bugs. But I don't know if that knocked me out of something, but I was feeling a little fragile yesterday because I haven't rode for three days on the erg, even though I promised I'd do 10,000 meters a day. And that's because two days ago I did something stupid. I I was really feeling peckish. I hadn't reached uh, feeling full yet. And I went in downstairs and bought a, a package of beef uncured hot dogs and had them 
boiled them and ate them way too close to Betty Bye. And so I had, um, so I had, uh, terrible acid reflux and stuff and popped into tachycardia, popped into, into AFib. Um, my, I had a night of sweaty, awful terrors. And then yesterday I popped back in and I'm fine now, but like, I need to remember not to eat, you know, after four or five in the afternoon. And that, uh, really, you know, the trigger for me is that, you know, is the acid reflux that, or the inflammation or any of those things that make sleeping hard. And when I have the acid reflux and I don't sleep well, then my body reacts badly. My heart reacts badly. I think it, uh, I keep on saying Vegas nerve, but I think it's vague, 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 Vegas, 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 Vagal, Vegal nerve. And then my whole body goes dum bum 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 ba bum 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 ba and I flirt with awfulness and I don't want awfulness. So on that note, I'll let you know how it goes, but I'm pretty psyched about this. And I don't feel a lack of performance anymore. I don't feel the keto flu. I don't feel like I'm being tragic during the day. I do not feel like desperado when I'm at the cafe. I don't even feel like I'm drinking that much coffee. I had half a pot left yesterday from my uh, from my stovetop cafe bus bu, uh, cafe bustello on my 19 cup, if you will. Uh, what is it called? Um, Mocha Express. I had half a half a carafe left on that. So I drank that cold. I had put it in the fridge, drank it cold this morning. And then I had two of my, you know, uh, coffees at Idito's and then didn't want any more. You know, I'm, I'm probably won't have any more coffee today. I'm going to, after I record this, I'm going to go home and work from home for the rest of the day. And, uh, Maybe have some liverwurst, or maybe just save this um, this salty meat, this salty fatty meat. Uh, I have two frozen pounds, two pounds, five pounds. But the only only time I can find seventy three percent lean ground beef at my giant is when they sell it as fancy Kobe. And in my giant, it's actually quite superior ground beef, but it is redder than um, I'm used to, which is nice because it looks fresher, but it just might be red dye number six. And it has a higher fat content because most of the time uh, bulk uh, ground beef comes in either 80, 85, 90 uh, or greater percent leanness. And... um, the carnivore diet is a fat, a high fat, moderate protein diet. It's not a high protein diet. It's a high fat, moderate protein diet. So I need to maximize that. In other words, um, when I finished my salty meat, I dumped um, butter on top of it. So butter is actually to fortify the fat content. To make it as high fat as possible. So uh, when it comes to uh, condiments, do not put a condom joke in here. When it comes to condiments, I think that butter is better. Like everybody on this diet adds all the butter. And so, you know, when I prepared this uh, Zojirushi vacuum thermos bottle of beef, when I was done, I dumped in a bunch of butter on top and that sort of just infused uh, the meat and so the meat tastes like buttery beef which is what they serve you I guess at steak restaurants just uh, do not cook the steaks I'm just not really good at cooking steaks on pans and doing all that like browning blackening stuff so I've just decided to cheap out and buy uh, fatty cuts of roast and just throw them into the into the uh, slow cooker 
um, give them, you know, between 8 and 15 hours, and then see what happens then on low. Uh, and then leave the pans for this uh, ground beef, you know, which I... Um, which I then, uh, believe it or not, I put it into a cold pan. I don't preheat it. I, I kind of form it into the pan and then turn on the heat. And if I leave it long enough, it actually is good because I don't need to treat the pan with any fat because when the pan heats slowly, it starts to render the fat from the, uh, from the beef before it even gets hot enough to start cooking the beef. So uh, I, it's almost like cooking it in tallow. Uh, and then when I know it's done and crispy, uh, if you know anything about um, cast iron or, or even stainless steel or any type of pans, um, when you put meat in a pan, there is what's called a release point. And that's a point where there's enough of a char or enough of a... Of a of a yeah a char or or a, it, it gets to the point where molecularly it it does no it no longer sticks to the uh to the pan this is a problem a lot of people have they just do not let something cook long enough for it to release itself it happens with fish it happens with chicken it happens with beef and it even happens with eggs so on that note um yeah my my next few meals are probably going to be uh, ground beef, ground Kobe, 73% ground beef, and uh, eggs. And I got, like, these eggs from Giant that have, like, especially vivid yolks because I'm freaking tired of seeing people on YouTube with their freaking personal hens who have these awesome bright orange and bright yellow and completely um, technicolor egg yolks that make the eggs look so healthier than the really lame, pale, convenience store, almost out of date, uh, commercially produced chicken eggs that, you know, I don't even know if there's any nutrition in there. All right, mahalo, love you guys, Alfita Zane. The next segment is going to be how you can contact me. But you never do. I don't even know why I do those extra segments. How about this? Fuck you. You don't get a contact me section this time. Um, if you want me to add a content section about how to contact me, uh, all y'all can do that by contacting me and asking me to put it back in there. Otherwise, no more contact, because I just say the same thing over and over again. Uh, maybe I can hire someone on Fiverr who will be willing to do that. Again, this is Season 4, Episode 27, Episode... Um, uh, uh, set und 20? Or is it... Um, vin, vin set, vin set. I don't know. I wish I remembered my Portuguese numbers. Anyway, it's episode 27, I think. Je pense, je, j'espère ça. Yo creo que si. Yo espero que si. Yo no sé. Um, auf Wiedersehen, tschüssi, and I love you. Bye-bye. Thank you for listening to The Chris Abraham Show. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any future episodes. Until next time. 